Hello. My name is Tina Andrews. If you are on here, you are um, here for the bullying webinar, the steps to um, preventing bullying. Um, I am so glad you have joined us. We like to do this workshop in October because October is Bullying Prevention Month. And um, you are muted, but we welcome questions throughout the presentation. Um, there is a little uh, box, there should be a text box, where you can um, ask questions. Your questions can sent, uh, be sent directly to me or to um, Sal Seely from Camp Rehoboth. Um, and uh, so no one else will see them except for us. And um, at the end, we will have a period of time where we will be able to answer questions, or we can contact you directly. Also, in that text box, box I have put our phone number and our email. Please feel free to contact us if you have a situation with uh, your child or um, a student. I am a um, project coordinator here at the Parent Information Center of Delaware. Um, this presentation is being recorded, and it will be available on our website for you to um, look at and to share in the future. So I am joined by Sal Seely from um, Camp Rehoboth. He will be the presentation in a few minutes. Um, we are going to jump right in. Please let me know by text box if you are having any trouble seeing or hearing me, um, and I will try to fix it. So um, the Parent Information Center of Delaware has been here for 35 years. We work with families of kids with special needs. Our mission is to advance effective parent engagement in education for all children to fulfill their potential to succeed. So we work with families of children with special needs. Um, we assist them in a variety of ways. This includes one-on-one -on -one consultations, um, learning opportunities such as this, trainings online, audio conference, or in person with groups, um, online resources such as our website and our weekly e-news, which goes out every Thursday and went out today, outreach at um, different organizations, and fairs and um, different community events, and then systems advocacy to ensure that the interests of children with disabilities are considered at both local and national levels. So for today, the reason that we um, are doing this webinar is that we want you to have a clear definition of bullying and cyberbullying and to know the characteristics of both. Additionally, we want you to understand the significant roles of the bully, the victim, and the bystander. Um, steps if your child is being bullied or is the bully, and tips on how to prevent bullying and resources. So these are our goals. Hopefully at the end, you will feel like you um, know these things. Um, bullying is very individual, and we are more than happy to talk with you about your particular child or situation um, because there could be a number of different resources that are unique for you. So jumping right in, Delaware's definition of bullying is any intentional written, electronic, verbal, or physical act or actions against another person that a reasonable person under the circumstances should know will have the effect of placing that individual or child in substantial harm, creating a hostile or threatening, um, humiliating or abusive educational environment, interfering with the student's learning environment, and perpetuating bullying. So this is Delaware's definition, um, and you can look it up um, in, uh, Recently, it was uh, reauthorized, um, um, so you can look that up, and we have that available to send to you if you would like to look at it. So, um, even though we have the definition, as I said, there are various definitions. So, we, ha we took um, the definitions and 
we um, looked at the commonalities. The commonalities are there is an imbalance of power. So people who bully use their power to control or harm, um, and the people being bullied may have a hard time defending themselves. So there is usually a vulnerability, and the bully is um, seeking to control or harm that person. There is an intent to cause harm. So it's not an accident. It's not something that the person that's bullying did not intend. Um, there is an intent to do harm, um, and um, there, that's the goal. And there is repetition. So this is not just a singular incident of, say, kicking or spitting or something, but um, multiple incidents or patterns. Um, and it happens to the same person by the same person or group. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, we have um, 45 minutes, about 45 minutes. So I want to make sure that I get through the information. However, um, I don't want to go too fast. Um, and there is a video that I would like to show you um, if we have time at the end. So welcome to everybody that has just joined on. Um, you should have a text box which has some information in it. And please feel free to use that to ask questions. So bullying can take many forms. Examples include verbal name calling, teasing, intimidation, threats, and coercion, spreading rumors, exclusion, alienation, breaking up friendships, physical hitting, shoving, kicking, property damage, or theft, and then cyber or electronic, using the internet, mobile phones, or digital technologies to harm others. And we have seen an increase in um, this form of bullying. So here are some statistics. Um, more than one out of every five students reports being bullied. This data was taken in 2016, so that um, may have increased. Um, we, that is the last data that we have. 64% um, of children who were, who were bullied did not report it. So think about that first statistic. More than one out of every five students reported being bullied, but more than 64% of children did not report it. Okay. Students who experience bullying are at an increased risk for poor school adjustments, sleep difficulties, anxiety, and depression. Um, and um, from 2015, among high school students uh, particularly, 15.5% are cyberbullied and 20.2% are bullied on school property. So this is um, bullying that is happening in an educational environment. Delaware statistics in particular, in 2015, 21% of Delaware high school students reported they experienced bullying within the past year. Cyberbullying is, um, I don't want to say new, it's been happening um, for many years now, um, but it has um, gotten a lot of attention and press um, as we've seen um, suicides, as we've seen um, the information garnered in um, litigation, as we've seen it, um, you know, um, causing harm to children's lives. Um, so the use of technology to bully or harass another person um, includes emails, text messages, Facebook, Twitter, and social networking sites, web pages, blogs, chat rooms or discussion groups, and other cyber technologies. So there. So, for example, uh, video games now have the option to, um, to have online um, teams and, and play together, and there's also a chat feature. There's Musical.ly and other um, uh, sites such as that, which also allow communication. So um, it's going way beyond just Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, um, to other forms of um, technology. 
cyberbullying uh, means messages or threats to a person's email account or cell phone, spreading rumors online or through text, posting harmful or threatening messages on social networking sites or web pages, stealing a person's account information to break into their account and send damaging messages. So we have seen um, a lot of um, an uptick in that as well, pretending to be someone else online to hurt another person, taking unflattering pictures of a person and spreading them through cell phones or the internet, or sexting, which is circulating sexually suggestive pictures or messages about a person. So these are some forms of cyberbullying. As I said, um, cyberbullying is um, exploding. Um, the definition is changing every day, and, um, and we are adding new um, definitions, new um, boundaries, and what this looks like um, for current students. In a Cox communication survey in 2009, 13 to 18-year-olds were asked how often they were cyberbullied. 15% then, so this is 2009, um, so you know, nine years ago, said they had been bullied online, 15%, 10% had been bullied by cell phone. So imagine what that looks like today. And when middle school uh, students identified who bullied them, it was, overwhelmingly another student at school, right? um, or they did not know. Um, so I'm not going to read through all of these, but um, it highlights the um, amount of um, students in middle and high school that are bullied online, um, and 90% of teens who reported being cyberbullied also had been bullied offline. Um, so that data comes from 2015. So the cyberbullying went along with the bullying um, offline. So that is something to remember. Um, so how do you know if your student is being bullied? What should you um, be looking out for uh, because they're not necessarily going to come to you and let you know that they're being bullied. So some of the things you can look for are increased absences from school, not wanting to go to school um, when previously they had wanted to go or um, didn't have feelings one way or the other. Changes in, changes in behavior, so they're withdrawn, they're disruptive, um, they, um, their behavior is um, not characteristic of, of their usual behaviors. Report losing items such as books, electronics, clothing, or jewelry. They have unexplained um, injuries. So suddenly, um, you know, they, they have scratches, bruises, injuries um, that they can't explain. They complain of headaches, stomach aches, or physical complaints. Um, they have trouble sleeping or eating, lose interest in visiting or talking with friends. They avoid certain places. So, for example, the mall, um, different, um, you know, parks and things where um, there are going to be other students there. They lose interest in schoolwork or they begin to do poorly in school. They appear sad, mood, moody, angry, anxious or depressed, and they talk about suicide. So obviously um, these things should be taken very seriously, but um, talking about suicide should be um, addressed right away. So before we um, talk about um, some things that you can do, let us talk about the act, the bully. So the bully, the person that is bullying um, often does not look like um, what you would expect. So often um, it is, um, you know, a normal looking student uh, that suddenly becomes increasingly violent with others, gets into physical or verbal fights, 
um, is sent to the principal's office or has extra money or new belongings that cannot be explained. Um, they sometimes can be quick to blame others um, for their actions. They will not accept responsibility. Um, they are in a group of friends that also bully. Um, they need to win or be best at everything. And they may have a history of being the victim of bullying themselves. So that is um, something definitely to um, look out for. So what does the law say about protecting students? Well, there is a, um, a Bullying Prevention Act. And um, there is a um, letter from the Office of Civil Rights. Uh, particularly about Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and Title II of the American Act. So let's talk about students with disabilities. Um, because it can look different than typical students when um, students with disabilities are um, bullied. How might it look different? Well, they are sometimes easily targeted because they may not pick up on the social cues. So they may um, be getting bullied and not even realize it at first. Um, so the people around them, their family, their friends, may realize that their child, um, their friend is being bullied and the, the student may not know. Um, they may be thought of as stupid or slow. And so they may be more vulnerable to bullying. So they may have this reputation with the other students of um, being less, and um, therefore they're vulnerable to that. They may be less likely to defend themselves. So they may not know how to um, extract themselves from situations or defend themselves physically, verbally, emotionally. They may be picked on because they're different with other students, not realizing it's a disability. So not all disabilities are obvious, and um, they may be different, um, and other students might not know that they have a disability. So what um, is different with a student with a disability when they are um, bullied? Well, um, bullying um, can be considered a denial of free and appropriate public education. So disability harassment under Section 504 and Title II is intimidation or abusive behavior toward a student based on a disability that creates a hostile environment by interfering with or denying a student's participation in or receipt of benefits, services, or opportunity in the institution's program. Harassing conduct may take many forms, including verbal acts and name calling, as well as nonverbal, such as graphic and written statements or conduct, conduct that is physically threatening, harmful, or humiliating. So students with disabilities have um, extra protections because the um, bullying or harassment may interfere with them learning and getting a free and appropriate public education. Check and see, make sure there's no questions. So, um, bullying and students with disabilities. So, um, basically, this states that school districts have a responsibility under Section 504 and IDEA, um, which is enforced um, by the government, that to ensure a free, appropriate public education is made available. Um, so disability harassment that affects their education may be a denial of their free and appropriate public education. And it decreases the student's ability to benefit from his or her education. So what does this mean for you? Um, well, well, first, let's talk about the other category which often is not um, considered or not talked about very much. So you have bystanders, right? So um, bystanders can be hurtful 
or helpful. And you'll notice this graphic up there. Um, we have the hurtful bystander um, who is um, recording the uh, bully. They are not participating, um, but they are watching and doing nothing. Then you have the helpful bystander who is calling for help for the student that is being bullied. So they are not necessarily rushing in to, um, to prevent it, but they are also not standing by and just watching um, or recording. Why is it that some bystanders don't inter intervene? Um, they think it's none of my business. They fear getting hurt themselves or becoming a victim. They feel powerless. Um, they don't like the victim or believe the victim deserves it. They don't want to draw attention to themselves because they might fear retribution. They think that telling adults won't help or it'll make it worse or they simply don't know what to do. They have not been taught the steps if they see somebody getting bullied or hurt, what they should do. So bystanders who don't intervene or don't report the bullying often suffer negative consequences themselves. This may include the pressure to participate, anxiety about speaking to anyone about it, powerlessness to stop it, a vulnerability to become victimized themselves, fear of associating with the victim, the bully, or the bully's pals, or guilt for not defending a victim. So what can you do if you suspect your child or a child um, that you love is being bullied? Um, one, doing exactly um, what you're doing today, watching this webinar. Also, um, looking at different um, resources, and we will provide some resources at the end of this. Educating yourself. Educating yourself about your school's policies on bullying and the school's current climate and culture. So are those policies being followed? Um, you know, the school should have their bullying policies on their um, website or available if requested um, through the office. Familiar, familiarize yourself with the warning signs. So we talked about some of the warning signs. Is your child isolating themselves? Are they suddenly depressed? Are they avoiding um, places and people and things that they used to love? Are they um, starting to get um, bad grades at school? Um, what, what are these warning signs? Talk to your children about the signs and about speaking up. So maybe they're not exhibiting these signs, but their best friend is or their sister or brother. Um, it's helpful if all children know the signs and are encouraged to speak up um, if they see anybody else going through this. Teach them about the differences between telling, tattling, or snitching. So I have young children. This is a conversation we have. So what is the difference between telling on someone, tattling, or snitching? Okay, because sometimes kids do not want to snitch when they really should be um, letting somebody know it's become a dangerous situation or a prolonged situation. And um, so they don't know the difference. So sometimes um, they need clear guidelines on, on when they should tell when it is snitching um, or tattling, what's the difference between them? Talk about the appropriate ways to respond. So, um, you, know, you know, talk to your children. If you see a fight happening or somebody being bullied, I don't necessarily want you to jump into the situation. How do you seek help? How, if you see something happening in cyberbullying online, where would you go? Um, how would you let me know or an authority know? Encourage students to embrace their differences. So connect them with parent support groups. Um, talk to your kids about how other students are different and help them embrace that. Um, also join a, a support group with children that are different than they are. Um, work with school or community groups for anti-bullying intervention programs. So these happen all throughout the year. They um, are not just um, happening in October. 
although this is when um, we really focus on bullying. But all throughout the year, there are anti-bullying intervention programs at your school, in your community, that you can be a part of. So for cyberbullying in particular, because that is um, different than um, bullying uh, physical or in, in a school setting, um, that can be very hidden. Um, it can be very pervasive. Um, for teens, talk to a trusted adult. Report to the content or website provider. So Facebook, Snapchat, whoever is the provider of that content. In some instances, ignore that. If, they, if you are the victim and you can block somebody, um, stop being in certain groups with them, choose that option. Um, for parents, communicate with your children about cyberbullying. They are familiar with it, or they will be, um, and it happens a lot. So communicate with your children your expectations, be aware of where they go online, familiarize yourself with the technology they're using, so what's available on cell phones, what's available um, in social media, what can they get to um, through the computer. Um, and, you know, there are... Um, Cyber, uh, cyber bullying programs that you can get to install on your phone and everything that will alert you if your children have gone to a place that um, you would not want them or if they are receiving messages with keywords that um, you feel are, are going outside of those rules. Make sure you develop and enforce rules. What's appropriate for you, your family, um, and what are your expectations for your child? Work together and come to a clear understanding about when, where, and for what purpose phone and computers can be used. Decide on fair consequences when that is broken and follow through consistently, which can be very difficult. Um, do not blame your child for being bullied. And that sounds simplistic, but sometimes the immediate response is, what did you do? Why are you being bullied? Do not encourage your child to harm the person who is bullying them, um, because obviously that puts them at risk, and um, it complicates the process of actually stopping the bully. Do not contact the parents of the students who bullied your child, because then you are escalating the situation. Um, instead of providing a solution. Do not demand or expect a solution on the spot. So, for example, if your child is being bullied in a school system, then um, there are many avenues to a solution, and it might not happen right away, um, depending on the severity, who's involved, the situation. For teens, do not retaliate, okay, because, again, it's escalating escalating the situation and not solving it. Um, and do not forward or share information or a photo you receive of someone else, okay? Because then you are participating in the bullying, even if you do not see the, the entire picture, okay? So um, some things that you can do when you are communicating with the school. So get the facts. Talk to your child um, and write down what's been happening, who's been involved, and when and where has it taken place. Use open-ended questions when you're talking to your child. Um, so don't ask, you know, did this happen here or here? Ask where did that happen? Why? What was going on beforehand? So they will give you information. Capture the bullying story. So write down all the details. Create a timeline of what occurred when in your child's rec 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 recollection and review it together, okay? So it may not happen in one sitting. You may have to meet with them a couple of times. Tell me what happened. How did this happen? Who was involved? Practice telling the story for you and your child. Before talking to the school, tell someone else that you trust the bullying story. Do you sound emotional? Did you stick to the facts? Um, did you have uh, a good amount of information to share with them? 
Review your school's anti-bullying policy. Check the website, the student handbook, or if you have to request it from the school or the district, okay? Um, and also look at the anti-bullying laws in Delaware. And you can certainly come to the Parent Information Center and we will help you through that function. Start at the bottom um, and work your way up through the school. So if your child is saying they are being bullied in class, um, ask if they um, have talked to the teacher. Contact the teacher yourself. Ask if he or she has seen the bullying and how they've responded. Tell them your child's bullying story and tell them you're going to touch base again um, to find out what steps have been taken. If the bullying continues, contact the principal. Um, again, tell the principal your child's bullying story, that you shared it with the teacher, and um, discuss any new incidents. Ask them how they plan on handling the situation. So you have taken it at that level. You did not get an appropriate response. You take it to the next level. If it continues two weeks later, um, and of course this depends on the severity of the bullying, contact the superintendent. Write a timeline of the events. Include who you, whom you've spoken to at the school level. And um, ask for help in ending the bullying. If at that point you have no changes, then consider contacting the U.S. Office of Civil Rights. The um, Office of Civil Rights protects public school students with disabilities from discrimination. So you can file a complaint within 60 days after you last speak with your school or district. Um, and we have that information available as well or you can go to the um, U.S. Office of Civil Rights um, website. If the bullying is still happening, an option that you have is contacting a lawyer. So an, a lawyer with um, experience in education law can help you if you're not seeing results. Um, so those are some steps that you can take um, to go through the school and then afterwards. Here are some additional resources, and this will be available on our website so that you can um, uh, access them afterwards. Um, delete bullying, stopbullying.gov, the Delaware Department of Education, Common Sense Media, bullying, PACER, Kids Against Bullying, and the National Bullying Prevention Center at PACER. So um, there's some resources. As I said, if you would like those resources, they will be available on our website. Um, and this presentation has been developed under a grant from the U.S. Department of Education, although it does, this content does not necessarily represent the policy of the U.S. Department of Education. So now I would like to introduce Sal Seely from um, Camp Rehoboth. He is going to talk in particular about his organization, um, the students that they work with, and um, the resources for all parents, um, community members, and students that are um, experiencing bullying. Hi, Welcome. good afternoon. This is Sal from Camp Rehoboth. I'm a licensed clinical social worker here. I've been uh, here at camp for about 18 years. It's a long time. So you can see that Camp Rehoboth, uh, we're not a campground. We get that all the time during the summer. Where can I send my kid for camp, for sleepaway camp? Camp is an acronym for Create a More Positive Rehoboth. Uh, we've been in Rehoboth for over 25 years, and we're a LGBTQ community center. And some of the programs that we offer, we have health and wellness programs. We have a camp families program. Any of our parents who have children, uh, we get together monthly um, beach cleanings or activities to build community. We do free HIV testing and STI screenings. We have Tai Chi classes. We have men's groups. We have women's groups. 
We have um, some young adult groups. So we do a whole wide range of things. The great thing about Camp Rehoboth is we're not only for the LGBTQ community, we're for anyone who walks through our door, regardless of gender or sexuality, can access our services. And you can find out a little bit more of us if you go online to camprehoboth.com. So um, not only is October uh, anti-bullying month, but it's also LGBT history month. So it's kind of fitting that we've been asked to present on a little bit on, on LGBT issues and bullying. Um, the great thing about History Month this month is it provides role models, we're building community, and we're representing civil rights statements about the contributions of the LGBTQ community here in America. And every country has their own, own individual observance. So just briefly, I always call this bit al alphabet soup. Um, LGBTQ lesbian, Lesbian and gay, um, and the definition of that is exclusive physical and emotional attraction to members of one's own sex. Bisexual, uh, bi physical and emotional attraction to members of both sexes. And when we look at the T, and that's really been popular in the news, what is transgender? Um, so transgender is an umbrella term. It describes people whose gender is not the same as, or does it not sit comfortably with, with the sex they were assigned at birth. Um, if you all have uh, children, they might have heard gender uh, nonconforming and non-binary. You might have heard those terms in the media. So we look at transgender people. They may not describe using themselves uh, one or more of a wide variety of terms, including, and I just mentioned transgender, non-binary, or gender queer, or gender nonconforming. And then we've added a plus to our name. So not only LGBTQ, but plus, that includes allies, people who support the LGBTQ community. Um, there are cues, there's questioning, um, and then there's some other terms. And you can all look that up or you can contact me with some more information. I'm happy to talk to anybody about our community. So as, as Christina said, there's different types of bullying that are, are experienced. And our students, our LGBTQ students are experiencing the same thing, physical, verbal, social, and cyber. Um, what makes it different is that it's compared to their heterosexual peers, some LGBT, LGBT kids, teens and young adults are increased risk for bullying, and that includes teasing, harassment, physical assault, and suicide-related behaviors. What we're seeing is that young LGBT individuals are bullied, and they, they may be bullied as part of a sexual gender, sexual slash gender discrimination and bias by their schoolmates ethnic or religious groups who may not agree with their lifestyle, I put that in quotes, or other societal concerns related to orientation and gender identity. And as a result, there's since have a, their bullying and harassment are definitely serious issues for, for these kids in schools. Um, taking a look at these numbers, we see that 25% of gay youth have been threatened or injured with a weapon on school property. 13% of gay youth didn't go to school because of these safety issues. And it's three times the rate as um, our, their counterparts. We also look at mental health, um, suicide issues, definitely within this community are at a greater risk. LGB, and that's lesbian, gay, bisexual youth, there are 30% attempted suicide rates. They're, it's actually doubled in the heterosexual rate um, than they're, what's happening in the school. School bullying is increased because of the risk of suicide. Um, the, a transgender, uh, the number that we found of 42% of trans youth in schools have, pretend, have uh, tried suicide. Um, those who reported moderate to severe rejection by their family were, were more likely to attempt suicide. And some of the things that you can look for, and it's similar again to signs of their straight counterparts, afraid to go to school, anxious or fearful, feeling unwell, isolation, loss of interest. But what the difference between straight and gay students, there's more isolation, there's more withdrawing. And what we're finding is as a result of the bullying, uh, they might be acting out more to avoid coming out. Coming out is when, so, when you would disclose your sexuality, 
Um, so a lot of students, if they're being bullied in school, will try to prevent coming out because they're embarrassed of what's happening. They're afraid of how parents may not be supportive. Or if they do come out and they're seeing other students being teased and bullied, that might keep them in the, uh, in the closet. So the CDC recommends for schools to support LGBTQ health. We like to identify safe spaces. And that would be if, if any of the parents who are on, if you know any other parents who have LGBTQ students, we like to identify safe spaces in schools. That would be uh, with a teacher or in a, a teacher that they know who is friendly or a classroom that they could go to if there's an issue. Um, and how we like to designate those is we ask teachers to put a safe space card uh, or a rainbow or another LGBTQ symbol, um, prohibiting harassment and bullying. We want to make sure there's access to health and providers who are not on school property who are LGBTQ or affirming. One of the things as parents and as um, adults we can push is we want to have professional development for students and for administrators so they get the signs, they understand what happens when someone is bullied and especially if it's based on gender or sexual orientation. And then we looked at, um, we wanted to provide health education curriculum with terminology. So I don't know how many of you knew, know what uh, the LGBTQ was until I told you, I'm sure most of you did, but we want to include that terminology in books and resources so people have an understanding of what, what those terms are and what they mean. So what you can do as parents, offer support for your student, for your, for your child, um, listen to them, educate yourself about things that are happening in the LGBTQ world, and especially with the T's with transgender or gender nonconforming students. It's confusing to me, so I know it's confusing to a lot of people. So it's educating yourself, reading, going and getting resources so you understand what's happening, looking at outside groups. Um, in a moment, I'll, I'll give you some outside groups. So one of the best ones here in Delaware is a group called PFLAG. That's parents and friends of gays and lesbians. Our T's are included in with that also. Uh, there's a group that meets up in Wilmington. There's a group that meets down in Rehoboth. And it's a parents group. Um, parents can come or they can bring their, their children and they can meet other parents who are having some similar issues of a child coming out or they're having some concerns about what's happening in schools. Um, if it is a hate crime where your student or your child or a student that you know is being teased or bullied based on sexual orientation, contacting the police. Um, also communicating and building self-esteem for, for the child. That's the most important thing, just to kind of, just to reaffirm that what they're going through, you're supportive and you're accepting them no matter who they're going to love. So here are some resources for you. Um, Camp Rehoboth is us. We have a mentoring program that's starting. So we're trying to work with parents who have students in, in public schools. If the student's having an issue with the teacher or administrator, we have mentors that can work with that parent or can help go to those meetings and advocate for that child. Delaware Pride is also here in, uh, throughout the whole state. They have activities for the LGBTQ community. Um, and again, we're, most of these groups are inclusive, meaning anyone, regardless of sexual orientation, can come to them or learn about the LGBTQ community. I've included the websites for PFLAG. Um, you can just do a Google search, PFLAG Newcastle County, Delaware, or PFLAG Sussex County. Uh, there's the PT, PTK group of Delaware, that's parents of transgender kids. That meets up in Nemours Hospital up in Wilmington. Uh, there's an awesome youth mentoring program out of Big Brothers Big Sisters, and I've put the phone number there. Carla Fleshman runs that program, and what they do is they match a LGBTQ adult with an LGBTQ student. There's a couple hotlines that I definitely recommend. One is called the Trevor Project. That's for any youth that are experiencing any deep depression or suicidal. There's also the LGBTQ National Youth Talk Line where students can call in or youth can call in to get some information about resources. They also can connect with a, a peer counselor who might be able to talk to them 
about what's happening and try to give them some, some problem solving. So I didn't include my information here, but it's Salvatore at Camp Rehoboth. Um, you can always just get Google Camp Rehoboth. There's so much more information. I know we've run out of time with my bit. I'm always happy to talk with anyone about particular issues or questions, um, meet with you, just talk to you on the phone, give you some resources, but I'm, I'm very happy to do that. And I can, stick around. Oh, I can stick around if anyone has any particular questions. Um, thank you so much for everybody um, for joining us. I am going to, we have a few minutes, I'm going to play um, this short video called Bully um, that was done by a um, student and his parents. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, to write them. As I said, they are private um, unless you broadcast it to the group. And um, then we will um, stop the recording. And um, thank you so much for joining us. We do do this workshop um, in person. If it's a parent group or a group that you um, would like us to come and talk about bullying, um, as well as um, using the resources that Sal described um, and the Parent Information Center one-on-one -on -one consultations uh, for you and your child. So I'm going to put the video up now. I'm sorry, can you hear the um, video? No, I don't think anyone, uh, there wasn't any volume. I apologize. I don't know why um, it is not, but I will um, put up the um, link to it, and um, hopefully you can play it. It is a, a great um, video. Hold on. I will put that up for you right now. So in the message is the um, video. So please um, check that out. Thank you so much for um, listening to our webinar. And, um, and please, if you will fill out the um, survey that is sent to you, we use that information to improve our presentations and to continue to be able to offer education to all families. Thank you so much.